Imagine canceling Albert Einstein right before he discovered E equals MC squared. That's exactly what happened to UCLA's Terence Tao, the so-called Mozart of mathematics, when the Trump administration abruptly axed his research funding. The official story came from political fallout related to alleged anti-Semitism at UCLA. The real story? Hundreds of millions of dollars have been lost for pure science. Today, I'm walking and talking with Professor Terence Tao himself in part one of a special two-part series with this famed and decorated mathematician. Today, we'll unpack how the world's most famous mathematician went from solving equations to battling bureaucracy, and why the future of American research depends on what happens next. Stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss part two of our special sit-down conversation with Terence Tao, coming soon. So, Terry, you wrote this very interesting and powerful blog post recently about the situation on campus funding that was cut not only for you, but for many members I, of the UCLA community. Can you give us the story on that? Yeah, so it's been a very chaotic uh, six months uh, in general. Um, and I think uh, we've been accustomed to a very stable um, and predictable environment here in the United States where, um, you know, we rely a lot on federal funding to do our research, to support our next generation of, of, of researchers. And um, uh, yeah, so, but a, a lot of rules have changed. It seems, it almost seems like the, the making of the rules as they go along now. Funding that was approved has been you know, suspended or canceled. New grants are, are definitely being, um, being cut. Um, there's been, um, there are more hurdles now to, um, to get foreign visitors to, 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 to visit or emigrate to the US. Um, but here at UCLA, uh, yeah, there was a unilateral cut to all NSF and NIH funding um, was suspended uh, a few months ago. Uh, including uh, my own personal grant, for instance, but um, also this, um, the, the Math Institute that I'm involved in, uh, IPAM, we, we use this grant to run our operations and we are set to, to, to run several major programs where we have many researchers from different fields come and, and talk to each other and um, we have to scramble to find emergency funding because suddenly our, um, uh, the grant that we were, we were using and which had just been renewed or suspended without any notice uh, and not for any scientific reason. I mean, so they, they said that it was, it was said that the the entire university was not compliant with, with something else. Uh, and they were just, you know, collectively, uh, basically imposing penalties on, 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 on the entire, on all the activities here. No, so, I mean, cuts are not unprecedented. You know, in the past, we've had budget cuts to the NSF and, and other funding agencies, but we get, you know, a, um, you know, usually there's, there's like a year or so of notice, um, and we, and we work with the agencies to sort of structure the funding so that you can get the most science out of out of the least uh, um, with the least disruption. But this this round is just very different. I mean, it, it, there's there's really no consultation, uh, and there's no effort to to try to um, um, to do the least harm possible. Do you feel like it was like intentionally targeting you specifically? I know your colleague Judea Pearl here. Um, I don't know him personally, but I know he was also obviously quite involved in the Jewish community at UCLA. And, and we should note for the listeners that might not be familiar, in 2024, there was a large encampment here, as there was at UCSD. Uh, here it lasted significantly longer. Mm -hmm. um, as I understand it, that was sort of the rationale for yeah. suspension of funding from miscompliance with Title VI. And what do you make of that? Do you think it was an excuse? Um, you've been critical yeah. of Trump, I think, for, for a while, but, but you don't think, uh, what, what do you make of the, is it a pretext? I, I don't pretend to understand the, the, um, the mode of thinking. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem targeted to any specific person. I, I think I think they're just making changing the rules as they see fit, mm -hmm. and it, in many cases there isn't a, a semblance of, of a long term plan. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean it's um, you know there there are other cases where where grants have been cancelled just because there was a keyword. You know, for example, uh, many math. Um, math projects involve inequalities. Yeah. And, and we've had grant proposals canceled because the word inequality is suddenly not a good word to use <laughs> in, a, in a grant proposal. I mean, so there, there's often not any discernible reasoning behind this. There may be impulsive decisions that have not really been thought out. I mean, I, again, this, this is an, another change with, with previous administrations. Normally there's a process, you know, if you want, want to adjust the budget of, uh, of an agency, you know, you may go through Congress and, and maybe you get the, the budget office to, to, to do some projections. And these are just decisions that are made, you know, very quickly with, with no, um, no public input, uh, not even congressional input mm. in, in many ways. Um, and so you, you have all these collateral, you know, so there's a lot of collateral damage, which um, maybe it's, I don't know if it's intentional or, or maybe they just don't care, but they're, they're not following sort of the standard due process mm -hmm. that we've been accustomed to. And when we think about the models of funding, um, 
we take for granted now that the federal government supports math and physics, um, but that wasn't always the case. In fact, Galileo, you know, was supported by patrons. The Simons Foundation supports, you know, a tremendous amount of math, research, autism, right. physics, et cetera. Um, do you think that we need a new model? This model has been around since the 1940s with the Ben Aver Bush's yes. Endless Frontier. Yes. Do you think, you know, that there is an argument to be made by people that say, well, why should Terence Tao is doing foundational work in mathematics? Why should most of his grant money go not to him, but to the university fringe benefits, IDC, which then can maybe support things that aren't related to the mathematics that you're trying to break ground with? Right. So, um, Mathematics is, is uh, the basic sciences in general. Um, they're part of a broad ecosystem, you know. So you do have these high-profile researchers, um, you know, and and I, I personally, um, you know, I could possibly you know get my own funding from private sources. Where federal funding really um, makes a, a, an impact is is in sort of providing the broader, long-term, stable environment where. Uh, you can get students to, um, to get attracted to, to come to work in science and have some guarantee of, of predictable uh, ability to, 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 to get funding and, and, and have some uh, ability to, to do research uh, before they've made the, the big name and before they can attract their own funding. I mean, we, we have um, in the past, you know, we, we have this, this, this great ecosystem where we have the federal funding as the base. Yes. Um, and then there is this industry and uh, the, the, the philanthropy which can provide um, more targeted and flexible funding for specific projects. I think you, you do. It's only the federal government has the scale and the long-term um, commitments. You know, if, if you rely on a patron um, or a, 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 um, a, an individual um, uh, philanthropy, you know, maybe they'll fund you for a year or two, but um, there was no real um, predictability that they, it would last. You know, you always have to, to, to keep renewing it. Now, it's the same is true for the funding agencies, but but there at least there was there was a very well established process, yes. you know, and you know we've had decades of, of you know we had to practice this which have been um, honed over the years, um, and we and we kind of know what what they want, they know what 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 we can offer, um, and it, it's worked very well um, until the last year when somehow a lot of the institutional practices and norms, much of, of what's going on now, is not sort of uh, consistent with any past policy of NA mm. of 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 of, a, of the NSF or. or um, yeah, so it's, it's, it, you need some of which you do the long-term planning because like um, many research projects, you need to hire postdocs, say, for three years or, or, um, or graduate students for four years. And, you know, it's, it's a big commitment to, to, to have to, to move to a different state, say, and, and have people set up. So you need funding that is predictable over that kind of time scale. Mm -hmm. And if every year you're, you're fundraising for just your this year's budget, uh, you, you can't do that. Right. It's very unstable. And then long term, really sustainable is a big, big keyword. As you said, these projects take many years, decades sometimes to come right. to fruition. You know, look, you're studying prime, you know, twin pairs of primes. They come on, they don't have any relevance to the real world. Why should, you know, an uh, auto worker in Ohio, you know, why should he or she pay taxes to support something that's, you know, literally pie in the sky. What do you say to people like that uh, that don't appreciate and have the love and passion that we do for basic, you know, fundamental blue sky research? Yeah, so, I mean, um, every technology pretty much that uh, people use these days, if you look under the hood, there was some basic mathematical advance that powered it. You know, yes. the, the, the fact that, that cell phones just work, um, even when there's many uh, cell phones in the same location, you know, there's no interference. There's a lot of mathematics that goes into making that work. Right. Uh, the fact that you can have a teleconference with somebody across the country and uh, you know the signal is pretty good. There's a lot of image compression. There's a lot of mathematics that, that goes into that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, as, as we talked about before, the fact that cryptography just works is because we we um, we know enough about prime numbers that cryptographers don't choose bad algorithms mm -hmm. that um, um, are kind of easily defeated by 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 certain features of of, of prime numbers. You know, it, it's 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 not visible. Math is at the very beginning of, of the pipeline. It's it's like the, the roots of like a tree. The tree, yeah. yeah. Right. You know, but if you take away the roots, you know, eventually the whole tree will die. That's a beautiful way to put it. Okay, so curious about the nature of prizes. Obviously, you couldn't have predicted you would win the Fields Medal. Right. It's harder to win than the Nobel Prize, right? It's <laughs> only offered every five years. You have to be under 40. Yeah. Um, was it a motivating factor? The, the thing about... Uh, Prizes, it doesn't help you prove the theorems in any 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 faster. Yes, um, the prizes are definitely this this mixed bag. So on the one hand, yeah, I mean personally, they they help the career of the Christmas Winston prizes. Uh, yeah, amazingly, they also you know I mean they they're good PR because people just naturally 
I mean, science and mathematics, mathematics in particular, is so abstract yeah. um, that if you just present the, the math, it doesn't. <laughs> if people don't connect with it. If they see a person, you know, then then there's, there's more of a connection. But it is also it also presents a misleading picture of how math works. Like it it it, it, it gives a sense that there's only a few people who can do math, and then everybody else who don't get the prizes, they can't do math at all. And and it it's it's it, it doesn't like that at all. So it it does. Um, I think, uh, I mean, what, what does help is actually the, the mid-tier of, of prizes where, um, especially for junior career, broader prizes, rather than the big sort of singular, um, you, know, um, you know, the best mathematician in the world type prizes. Those, those I think, are less useful. But there's a public sort of demand for Jeff, something like this. Yeah, the hero worship and uh, the great man yeah. and woman of history. Yeah. What about the millennium uh, problems and the prizes? What's the status of them? Uh, you're famously involved in the Avier Stokes uh, version of it, but maybe you could recap for my audience not familiar with it. What were the Millennium Problems? What are they? What are the, what's the foundations so, and what uh, would you add to it? Right, so, yeah, so this is one example of, 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 of philanthropic funding of mathematics. Right? So the, the Clay Foundation in 2000 announced uh, seven $1 million prize problems selected to be sort of representative of... Um, uh, uh, <laughs> we're being set upon by AI. Oh, yes, I'd love a latte. Uh, it's gone off the ramp, I think. So you think that AI has no, math has no uses? Yeah. That's what it's doing right there. Perfect, get a picture of that, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, sorry, before we were interrupted by our mechanical overlord. Uh, Millennium Prize is established by the Clay Foundation in right. 2000. Yeah, yeah so um, they established, so they identified seven problems in seven different areas of mathematics, which were kind of representative of, of um, of really big um, goals in my thing, and, and all considered extremely, extremely difficult. And so, yeah, so it, it, it received a, a big splash. All each, each of the seven is a really important problem. Um, I wouldn't say that they're the seven most important problems, in, in, um, but they're very representative. Because, yeah, so they became somewhat well known. And so you could explain PDEs as, 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 as the field which contained, for example, the, the, uh, the Navier Sox uh, the, the Navier Sox regularity part, which is the, uh, the problem I'm most familiar with, uh, which is. Uh, uh, basically, it's the question of whether water can spontaneously explode um, from mm -hmm. from smooth initial conditions, mm -hmm. which which we never observe it to happen. Right. But in theory, the equations could actually have a solution that does that. So um, yeah, it, it, they they ha they have been very motivating. There is this funny effect though that like if you if the, if it, if the, one of these problems is very far from being solved, then having a a big famous prominent problem encourages people to work towards the goal and, and, and publish partial results. Mm -hmm. But if it gets, if, if, um, if you get, the problem is getting really close to being solved and you just need one or two more papers to, to, to get there, people start becoming secretive yeah. and, and they, they, they don't share their ideas suddenly. That's exactly what you don't want. Yeah, prizes are generally productive and until they become sort of too, too much of the focus. <laughs> So. What would you add if you could add a Millennium Prize? <laughs> and not just one that you've already solved and you're uh, keeping in your drawer upstairs. That's a, that's a good question. I, I mean, I'm increasingly inclined to, to, to think about broad problems rather than singular problems. Mm. Um, I think sort of gravitating towards um, challenges where instead of trying to solve one problem, I make some list of, of a thousand or, or, or a million problems, and I just try to say, okay, uh, who can solve, well, what tools can solve the greatest percentage mm. of this of this broad class of problems? Um, I think well, so. First of all, this this is the type of um, of mathematics which I think modern technology like AI can can really make, uh, make an impact on, and I think it's 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 less exclusive. You can be less competitive. I mean, you, you can still compete. You know, mm -hmm. I can solve twenty six percent. You can solve twenty five percent. Right. But um, it's so cumulative. And like everyone can contribute a piece. Whereas the, one of the problems with these prizes is that is that there's all, it's all or nothing at some point. Like right. uh, yeah, I mean you either get the prize or you don't. And I feel like that that is uh, right. Uh, yeah, that, that that can be unhealthy. All right. Well, Taryn Stow, thank you so much for your time and yeah. your wisdom, and it's been such a pleasure getting to meet you and spend the day with you. Thank you so much for having us here. Yeah, no, that was great. So there you have it, Taryn Stow's solution to the pressing problems of politics and mathematics. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss part two, where we sat down for over two hours with Terrence in his office, talking about his research, artificial intelligent math professors, and whether mathematics is created or discovered. Watch this video with UCLA PhD Sam Harris, who also is no fan of Donald Trump and believes that Donald Trump is killing scientific research in America. Click here and don't forget to subscribe.